Everyone has a message to communicate to their audience. But in a world that is moving so fast when it comes to technology, website design can feel more complicated than ever before for entrepreneurs. My name is Tim Haynes, and I am the founder of Symposia. Symposia is a 15-person marketing team based here in Holland, Michigan. And today, we are going to take you through a crash course on website design. Let's start with some key insights. I want you to begin with the user experience in mind. Back in 2018, from my 10th floor apartment in Grand Rapids, I had the pleasure of watching a festival unfold on the streets below. And I noticed a variety of issues with this festival. The lines for the bathroom were extremely long. I mean, these people looked like they were in pain. The paths didn't have clear signage, so it wasn't necessarily obvious as to how you should get from point A to point B. Overall, the people attending this event did not look very happy. That's likely because it was a bad user experience. On the internet, we would define a good user experience as all interactions around your website. A good user experience for this festival that I've mentioned from my 10th floor apartment would have included more bathrooms, shorter lines for bathrooms hopefully as well, better wayfinding signs, wider paths, and just overall a better orchestrated event. This would have made people so much happier to have spent $80 to attend. Let's make sure that you know how to create good user experiences on your website. On the web, user experience is defined as all of the interactions that a person would have with your website. So how do you make a great user experience? A few things to consider here. First of all, consider that by making a great user experience, you're going to be able to easily differentiate yourself from your competitors. If I go to your competitor's website and I hate using it, but I love using your website, it's going to be easy to pick you over them. Also, consider the fact that much like a great startup, the user experience usually starts with one or two problems and then crescendos into a giant puzzle of problems. I'm sure if you're like me when you started your business, you thought you only had one or two issues to solve for, and you found that you actually had probably dozens, hundreds, maybe even thousands of connected problems to solve for. So plan on that being the way that user experience works as well. Make sure that as you design with user experience in mind, you're keeping mobile devices in mind as well. If I can't navigate your website on my tablet or my phone, that means that you have a bad user experience, especially if I can't get to the most important things, for example, a map or a contact form. I want you to also make sure that you're focusing on the user in the phrase user experience. How are they using your website? What do they want to be able to accomplish? What are their frustrations on your existing website or on the websites of your competitors? Websites will evolve as your brand and your organization evolves. Therefore, your user experience is not a one-time problem. It is something that will continue to evolve as your business grows and it will require vigilance as your business expands. The next insight that I want to share is that your website should tell your brand's story. For many entrepreneurs, the website is the first opportunity to explain the what, the how, and the why of their business. When we look at millennials, they are overwhelmingly focused on the why. Make sure that you are creating an opportunity for them to connect emotionally with your brand's core values and purpose. Of course, there are going to be a variety of types of people that look at your website. You might have Jake from the engineering department, and you might also have Amy from the design team. 
these two individuals will have slightly different needs and you need to make sure that the website takes them both into consideration. We often refer to this concept as your website personas. Bottom line, start with why. Using your entire budget on a website is an insane choice. The website doesn't matter if you can't send traffic to it or generate leads through it. These factors are the things that drive cash in a business. And without cash, there can be no growth. So you have to build your budget with all of these things in mind. Many entrepreneurs spend their entire marketing budget on a beautiful website, and then they forget to leave money for the actual ongoing marketing and sales. A strong marketing strategy needs to explain how the budget will be best used strategically over the course of time. Ask yourself the following questions. How much money do I have to support my other business objectives? And what are those business objectives? For example, do I need to hire a salesperson or a part-time salesperson later this year? If I do, then I need to keep that in mind as I'm deciding how much money to commit to a website build out. Does the internet matter for my business currently at this stage in my business journey? It may, it may also not. For example, if you are trying to take a product to market the website might not be the most urgent thing to figure out. What other technologies am I using currently or am I thinking of potentially using in the future? Examples would include a CRM such as Salesforce or an email marketing platform such as MailChimp. It's important to have a technology roadmap as part of your overall marketing strategy. Who is in charge of maintaining the website once it launches? How much time will it take to maintain that website? And how much will that cost? Can the website start out as something basic and then evolve over time as the business grows more complex? For example, do you wanna start with a one-page website and then later build out a far more intricate website as your business grows. Last but not least, save money so that you can drive traffic to your website through tactics such as social media, pay-per-click advertising, email marketing, and so forth. If nobody sees the website, it won't generate revenue and it won't impact the growth of your business. P.S. It is getting nearly impossible to execute an aggressive full-scale marketing strategy without an extended team. That's why we have 15 people on ours. Bottom line here, the build it and they will come philosophy is just a bunch of malarkey. Don't create a new retail store and just pray for people to show up. Do something to get them in the door. Accessibility matters. Ideally, everyone should be able to use any website on the internet. It shouldn't matter if an individual has a condition that affects their capabilities or what hardware or software they might be using at home. Bottom line, make your website inclusive by making it accessible to all. What questions should I ask if I'm considering the possibility of hiring a professional? One, do their core values align with our core values? Is this someone, quite simply put, that I want to hang out with for an extended period of time? Two, do they understand the mechanics of our business? Three, are they the right option for our budget? You can't buy a Cadillac if you only have a budget for a Honda. What can I use to build a website? Depending on your business and goals, you may or may not need a content management system. 
Although static HTML works in some situations, the overwhelming majority of entrepreneurs that we talk to find that they will benefit from a content management system or a CMS as they want to continue to market and grow their business over time. But don't get lost in jargon. WordPress, let's start there. It's an excellent choice for many entrepreneurs because of a whole bunch of reasons. First of all, almost 40% of the entire internet is currently built on WordPress. There is a wide talent pool of expertise here to draw from. A customized WordPress site can be made to do a variety of unique things. Therefore, it fits most businesses' needs. WordPress and its underlying technologies are also not going anywhere anytime soon. It's something that's safe to rely on. Let's talk next about Shopify. Shopify is also an excellent choice, but it tends to be a better fit for those that are looking for e-commerce capabilities. It is a cutting edge e-commerce platform and it doesn't necessarily have to break the bank. It is easy to deploy a Shopify website. Shopify websites can be entirely customized, similar to WordPress. Shopify websites can also be connected to a variety of other e-commerce platforms and technologies so that the business can be as efficient as possible. For example, Shopify could make it possible to connect your shipping label tools to the website where your shipping orders are likely generated. If you're on a super tight budget and these two options both seem too difficult to spend money on, what should you do? Well, cautiously consider looking at something like Squarespace, but remember that it might be a poor long-term solution if you're planning on scaling up your business. Make sure you ask an expert and don't mess up this step. You can get a good WordPress site for five to $10,000 if you're doing something at a more basic level. Consider also the possibility of sticking to a Facebook page or a medium.com blog account that gives you the ability to post articles and content and have some sort of a presence without setting up an actual website until you've built out your idea further. I'm an entrepreneur with a million other things to do. What else should I consider doing here? Is it the right time in your business journey to put resources into building a website? Does this really fit in on the timeline of your strategic plan? Do you want your business strategy to be written down before you design a website? Or are you going to use the website design process as an opportunity to ideate upon your strategy and figure out your business's goals. Both options work. One will simply take more time than the other, and I'm sure you can guess as to which one that is. How fast do you need to complete a website? Or at least the version of the website that you're trying to complete now. And will your presence on a website design project make it go faster? or will it make it go slower? Sometimes decision makers such as a CEO can actually get in the way of a website design process. I hope that this video has been helpful. If you have further questions about this topic, or if you want to grab the worksheet that goes along with it, or if you just want to contact me, well, great news. You can do all of those things and more on Union. Again, I'm Tim Haynes from Symposia. If you're not part of the Surge startup community, you should join it today at lakeshoreadvantage.com slash surge. Be sure to tune into our other Surge Learn videos to help power your business forward. Thanks again for watching and have a great day. Bye.